So, Scott, if, Scott, if you take it away. Wow, this is this is wonderful to get a chance to talk about. I, I actually gave, I gave this talk last night to my um, uh, course in emergency management, and uh, nobody had ever heard of uh, the 20 students in the class, nobody had ever heard of radon. Really? Oh, this is important to talk about. So, um, and I love talking about it because um, it uh, people don't realize that it, it causes huge amounts of uh, lung cancer. And so we here at Portland State are the ones who we, me, with my students over the last 30 years have put together all of the maps for the state of Oregon, for the Portland area, and then Oregon. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And so uh, what I want to do is, first of all, talk about what radon is. And then secondly, what are our chances of finding it here in Oregon and because we have mostly basalt bedrock basalt bedrock uh, does not produce a lot of radon gas but it, radon gas is something that naturally comes out of the ground uh, and then uh, back in the 70s and 80s what did we do we said we are losing too much heat that is going out and we need to capture the heat in houses and so we completely closed up houses keep all of the air in well what we're doing if natural uh, radon gas is coming out of the ground and coming into the house you're increasing the amount of radon gas that you have got and that can cause increases in lung cancer so um so this is basically the story of what radon is and where it can be found here in oregon how to test for it and if you've got it uh in your house that how do you mitigate for it so so that's the background on this so I'm going to take it away. Uh, mm -hmm. And so radon gas uh, is uh, natural gas. It was uh, first described by Madame Curie back in 1904 or something like that. Uh, and she just found that here is a, a gas that is out there. It's tasteless, it's colorless, odorless. You don't even know it's there. And uh, all rock in the world has a little bit of uranium and thorium in it. And it will eventually break down into lead uh, uh, through a whole bunch of stages. And it's interesting, it's solid, solid, solid. And all of a sudden it will come to become radium and then radium will go to a gas, radon, and then it will go back to a solid polonium. And, and so if you're keeping uh, all of the air in a room, you, you can be getting a lot of it coming out of the ground and then you can have very high values of ra uh, radon. What's the danger? EPA tells us that 20% of all the deaths U.S. deaths uh, from lung cancer come from radon. Uh, and then it's five times greater if you're a smoker. And it's the number one cause of cancer, lung cancer in non-smokers. Uh, and so, uh, for instance, if you are a person and you start coughing a lot, you go and get a chest x-ray, they determine that your lung is just full of, of cancer. You go to the oncologist, the first question the oncologist is going to say, are you a smoker? And if you say, no, I've never smoked a day in my life, they say, test your house, house for radon because that is probably where you got it from. Uh, and, and so, uh, as I said, this as an environmental hazard was only discovered in 1984. And this was back in um, Pennsylvania. And they were building a nuclear power plant. Uh, and I can't remember the name of it, but what they did is they had basically like a big Geiger counter. And so all of the people working in the plant, as they left, if they came through and they were radioactive, it would set it off. Well, the, the plant hadn't even opened. They hadn't even started making energy at this plant. And one day a guy named Stanley Watrous went through and he set it off. And they said, you're radio radioactive. They went to his house. And it was full of radon gas. Uh, we'll be talking about what high and low values are. Four picocuries per liter, if it's over that, it's high. Well, his house was like 385 picocuries per liter, loaded with it. And that was, that was 1984. And then we started finding, hey, we are trying to get people to uh, hold, hold their houses uh, tight in the wintertime to keep the heat in while you're keeping the radon gas in. Every one of my talks, I always dedicate it to Bob and Marlene, uh, who lived in Lake Oswego. Both of them have passed away. Bob died at the age of 48. He should never have died. Uh, he, uh, he lived his whole life in his basement. Half of his basement was his man cave. And so he watched uh, football games, basketball games, baseball games, drank a lot of beer, one half. But the other half, he was a contractor. And that was his office. 
and didn't realize that the radon gas was naturally coming out of the ground and he was breathing high radon gas all of the time. And at the age of 48, he died. Marlene used to help us. You see, I was on the radon council for Oregon for many years and she would go out when we give talks and he said, get your house tested. It's cheap to test and it's cheap to mitigate if you got it because my husband died at 48. He should never have died uh, because we never tested. And then she died a few years ago in a car accident. So we, I dedicate everything to them. So here is a screen. You have rock naturally underneath the house and it will come out of the ground and it will rise up into the house, especially if you have an older house with a lot of cracks in the foundation and things like that. Highest values are always gonna be in the, uh, in the basement. And then as you go up the first floor, it's gonna be less. And as you go up the fourth and fifth floor, it becomes uh, less and less. So you gotta have permeable soils. You need to have a generator with the uranium and thorium that is in the uh, bottom. Uh, now, around here, we have mostly basalt. It is a low, generator. But if you have granitic sediments, granite or granite rock, it's a high generator. So here is a chemical thing. Uranium is up here and, and thorium. Those are two radioactive elements that are found in all rocks around the world. Now, good news is in a lot of rocks, it's very low concentration. But in granite, it's very, very high. Uh, and they will break down into uranium and then into thorium and then radium and then radon gas then polonium, and then eventually end up as lead. Uh, and so <coughs> radon gas is a natural byproduct of the uh, uranium and thorium breaking down into lead. Every year uh, in the United States, we uh, EPA says we have 21,000 people dying because of radon gas, lung cancer. That's more than drunk driving, more than in-house falls, drowning, or fi house fires. And so it is a major cause of that. Now, three values that I want to mention is if everything is measured in picocuries per liter, PCI uh, per L. If it's over four picocuries per liter, you have a problem. Two to four is medium, and then below two is good. Uh, well, no, no value is good, but it, it is low chances of you getting lung cancer as a result of that. Now, World Health Organization uh, for... Uh, Developing countries say above eight is going to be bad. Uh, and then for developed countries, they, they say it's 2.7. EPA says for the United States, it's four. And so World Health Organization, they're more conservative that are out there. Now, if we just went outside and measured the air around us, everywhere we are, it's 0.4 picocuries per liter. It's in the air all of the time. Uh, and then uh, we encourage people to... You take a short-term test. Short-term tests cost about $20 to do them. Uh, Long-term tests are about $40. And so a lot of people do uh, short-term tests. If it's between four and 10, then get a long-term test. If it's still high, then mitigate. So uh, nationally, uh, how many houses are over four picocuries per liter? Nationally, one in every ho eight houses for the United States is gonna be above four picocuries per liter. Now for Oregon, it's about one in every 15 houses. So we, why? Because we have a lot of basalt bedrock, but in Portland, it's one in every four houses. And so we have a problem here. And then if you did the, do the short-term test, which we've done is like one in every three houses uh, that we have got. Uh, and for the whole United States, the average value is one picocuries per liter. But the, the value of houses uh, in the United States that are above four picocuries per liter, 10 million houses are high. People don't realize this. And we need to uh, uh, test to find out if you have it. And if you have it high, then get it mitigated. Now, what are the factors that move th this gas coming from uh, the ground into your house? First of all, bedrock geology. If you got a lot of granite around, you're going to get a lot of radon gas that being uh, generated. If you have basalt, not as much. Also soil permeability, that is the holes in the rock. And if you have a place for the gas to rise up, it will keep rising up uh, into your house where you may trap it. Also construction of the house. Uh, the, more, uh, the older the house that you have, the more foundation cracks that you have, the more chances for radon gas to come in. Now groundwater uh, is the opposite. It will actually trap it. And so if you have high groundwater around your house, it actually traps the this. But if you take, uh, but it traps it. 
then if you have a well and you have your uh, your well, you, you take showers every time you have showers, that well water will be releasing the radon gas into your house. And so if you're on well water, uh, make sure that you open up the windows and aerate there. The highest values are always going to be in the basement, then next the first floor, next the second floor, next the third. Uh, so where are the areas with the highest radon geology, geologically? Number one, granite. So we, the good news is we don't have a lot of granite around here. But we do have granite in Oregon, for instance, down in southwest Oregon, down in the Klamath Mountains, and then up in northeast Oregon, up in the Wallowas. Also dark shales. Good news is we don't have many dark shales around here. <clears throat> or phosphate bearing rocks. We don't have a lot of those. Or we have faults. We have so many faults in Portland uh, and, and in Oregon. Uh, there, there's one that's right, right back of Portland, running at the base of the Fallout Mountains of the West Hills. It's called the Portland Hills Fault. And so there are places here, right in Portland, where the, uh, the flatland meets the hills have very, very high radon gas. Landslides are another place uh, where you have high values uh, because, uh, because as the ground slides down, it will become more porous and then it will have that permeability that you have got for this. Highest value that we ever found in Oregon was in a house down in Salem. And this was back in 1992. And I went down there with George Toombs. He said, we found a house that had 75 picocuries per liter. Really, really high. And yeah. it was a new house, only three years old. <clears throat> and so what we did, we went down there. Well, another one of my specialties are landslides. And it, it, it's South Salem Hills. Uh, and we're looking down on the Willamette River, absolutely gorgeous view with the river down below uh, and then uh, steep slopes. But as we went down the driveway, uh, there was an area that was very rounded with a house right in the middle. I said to George, this is an old landslide. The whole thing has slid down and we're on a slump block of this and the house is built on this. And so it, it and, and that was the reason why it, it, it's so highly permeable permeable soils were allowing that radon gas to come up in. And in Portland area, Missoula flood sediments. Uh, these are the great Missoula floods occurred uh, primarily between 19,000 and 15,000 years ago, bringing sediments down from up in uh, uh, British Columbia and Canada. Uh, in, in, and so the sediments, especially the sand sediments that you have got and the gravel sediments that you got are loaded with granite. And the granite rocks are the ones that are bringing it. And so Alameda Ridge in North Portland, or, or if you go across over to, into um, um, Vancouver, uh, you, you have got the, the equivalent high area over there uh, for, called Fourth uh, Mill Plain, Pendant Bar, that you have got over there. Uh, those have a lot of granitic sands and silts and gravels in them. And they, those we call North Portland Radon Ridge because the highest values are out there. People always ask about granite countertops. Yes, they do generate a little bit of, of uh, radon gas, but if you have a well, we generally find those in uh, kitchens, and if you keep it well ventilated, it's not going to be a problem. So you need to have a you need to have a generator in the rocks, and then you need to have permeability that is there. So th that's the background. How do we test a house? We encourage everybody to test your house, and you have three choices: charcoal canisters which take three to seven days. They generally cost 12 to $15. I think that value is a little bit higher now, maybe 15 to $20. And I'll show you these in a second. Um, and, and so what you do is you open them up and then, you, uh, and then you write the time and the date that you do it, leave it open for a week to 10 days. And then when you close it up, uh, you put the date and the time and then you close it up and tape it off and you send it off to a lab and then the lab uh, so they have a charcoal in it that it will absorb the radon gas. Uh, and then it'll send an uh, email back to you and say, oh, you have a two picocuries per liter, which is average. Or it say you have 20, do something, mitigate. Uh, and then, uh, but they're cheap. You have alpha detectors. And I'll show you these in a second. Those are long-term. You leave them for one to two months there. They cost 25 to $40 now. Uh, they're much more reliable because you're giving a, a longer period of time to do that. We encourage everybody to test in the wintertime. That's the time when you close the house up and you don't have a lot of open windows uh, aerating out the house and a lot of doors opening and closing and exchanging the air. So you want it at the highest time of the year, which is going to be in the wintertime. 
that you have got. And uh, we test, example, test for three months. Don't test in bathrooms and kitchens, mainly because you have a high amount of moisture in those. And, and so they, they may throw off the test a little bit. So test in other places like that. What I do is do it where you have very little airflow, like a closet. And, 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 and so, um, so the closet in a, a living room or a bedroom or same place like that, those are your best ones. Or you can pay $150 or $200 to have a professional do it for one day. A lot of re real estate uh, transactions, it's called the CRM, Continuous Radon Monitoring Machine, professionally done. It's expensive, but a lot of times um, real estate agents say, this is an area where we have high radon. You want to know if that house has it high or low. And if it's high, then they need the people who have the house need to mitigate. The good news is it is cheap to mitigate. So here are your different things. On the left-hand side is a long-term test that you have got uh, uh, two to three months. Short-term test, that is the, the uh, like uh, five to seven days that you have got. And here is your con CRM, the Continuous Radon Monitoring Machine that a professional generally uh, uses. So um, if you find that your value is high, let's say it's, it's 15 uh, per picocuries curies per liter, you got to do something about that. The good news is it's generally for a normal house that is like uh, uh, 2,000 square feet high. It's $1,500 to $2,000 per house. It's not that expensive. And so what we say is it's cheap to test and it's cheap to mitigate. So how do you mitigate? First of all, you go in and seal off the places where radon be, be coming in. That is in the basement, seal off all the cracks that you have got. Uh, if you don't have a basement, then... Uh, then you, on your first floor, you may have cracks coming into the place. Secondly, put in a gas collection system. Uh, that we, it, uh, uh, what we do is, and we'll show you how this works in just a second, it's basically a tube that goes through the uh, basement uh, into the soils below. It sucks all the air out, and then you put a, uh, a, um, a pump on it, and it runs continuously. So you're going to have a little monthly bill of 5 to $8 for that. Uh, and uh, to run that, and it pumps the air out into the atmosphere. Solution to pollution is dilution. So you suck it out of the ground, it's not coming into your house, and then it goes off into the atmosphere. In the old days, we said another way is to just open and close your windows the old-fashioned way, but it's not very efficient, and a lot of times you forget to do that, so it's better to put in the system. Here is an example of this. So here is a house, and you put a hole through the, the bottom um, concrete that you have got into the soils. And, and this one has two places into it. And so it sucks the air out of the soil. And, and then what you do is you run pipeline up to the roof. And here is a pump, a fan that is continuously sucking the air out of the ground and then uh, putting it off into the atmosphere. Here is a house. You can see here is the, uh, the pump that is here. It's going up into the atmosphere out there. And it, 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 it's connected to pipes that are in the ground in the basement of that house. As you go into North Portland, you'll see a lot of your houses are out there uh, that have um, these pumps on them. Uh, back in the early 90s, we would go up to people and say, you know, we would love to put a, a radon detector in your house. And they said, no, I don't want the value of my house to go down. Don't do it. I won't, don't want to do it. They're more concerned about losing money and the value of their house than it is for protecting their health. Now, houses sell better, uh, if, especially if they're in radon high areas, if they already have a system in. And generally, uh, systems like this will last five to 10 years with no problem. And we just tell people every five years just to test, uh, you know, with a short-term test. And most of them are going to be very, very low. Uh, and, and we have some houses that have had them in for 30 years and are still working very, very well. So it's cheap to uh, test, it's cheap to mitigate that you have got. How do we put all this data together? Well, every all those companies where you send these kits off to, they record only the um, uh, zip code. And then they send them back to the state, the person who is in charge of radon monitoring. And so uh, back in the early 90s, there, was only, there were only two guys that were doing the whole state. And so they had huge uh, number of tests and they had nobody to uh, work them. So my students and myself, uh, we operated on student labor and they went through all of them, got the labor, uh, the, uh, the values that you had for all of these tests that have been running uh, uh, for the state of Oregon. 
And we looked at three things, maximum value, average value for the zip code, and then the percentage of houses greater than four Pico Curies per liter. Uh, and then what we did is we converted these into an over, uh, overall risk potential that you have got that people can understand. You have high potential, moderate potential, low potential for uh, radon. And how do we do that? Well, we had, um, uh, we uh, for the zip code, we would say um, uh, for each value for each house, uh, what's the maximum value? If it's less than be four, then you get one. If it's between four and 10 for that house, you get a two, or if it's over 10, it gets a three. Uh, and then for the average uh, value for that the house that you have got, uh, if the value of the house is less than two, uh, then they get one. If it's between two and four, it's two, two, uh, two. And then if it's over four, it is three. And then for the zip code, uh, if, if less than 16% of the houses uh, are over 4% or four Pico Curies, then you get one. If it's between 16 and 35, it's it's going to be two. If it's over 35, it's at three. And so you'll for each zip code, you'll have three values uh, for maximum, average, and P, uh, percent here. And if the value is three, it's going to be low. But if it's nine, it's going to be high. Uh, and, and so we would say, uh, uh, so for high values, back in 2003, for all of the zip codes that we had in Portland, eight of them were high, 15 were moderate, and 16 were low. So 59% were in the high to moderate category. In 2013, we had a lot more zip codes. Uh, and we found that 19 of the zip codes that, uh, that we had were high, 41 were moderate, and only 14 low. And so 81% of the zip codes were high to moderate and problematic. Uh, so we have a, had a group for about 20, 25 years uh, that uh, were all of the radon mitigators, the state people, and then my research team from Portland State. And we put together a Senate bill uh, back in 19, uh, uh, 19, uh, 2011. It went through the... Um, uh, the state legislature basically said new buildings built in Multnomah County and 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 also uh, Washington County uh, and Clackamas County and a couple other counties have to have uh, radon mitigation programs that are uh, uh, passive. That and I'll show you how that's done. Uh, and so no pumps on it, so there's no electrical bill that is there. Uh, it became effective in uh, 2013. So our counties have it, but many other counties don't have that. What you do is you put your foundation in and then you'll have concrete that is down at the bottom or you just put gravel down there and then you put visqueen in and then you, in the middle of the house, you'll have a pipe that goes from the gravel that is down below. Let's go back here. Uh, and it goes right up through the center of the house. The heat of the house will cause that uh, all of the gases to rise up through there and it prevents the gas from coming into the house. Uh, and so th this is, it got approved by the Associated General Contractors and it works very well. So here is a map of the Portland area. These are the zip codes that are out here. Uh, and so here, here is I-5 here. We are right, I'm right down here um, in uh, 97201 zip code. Um, I live in uh, Tualatin which is outside, uh, I live right down in this area. And so we are um, um, an area which um, actually is uh, this one right here, it's moderate. Uh, Lake Oswego uh, out in this area is moderate. And then high areas, this is uh, Alameda Ridge, we, Radon Ridge here in Portland. And these are all Missoula flood sediments here in North Portland too. South of 405 uh, and, and uh, on either sides of 205. And then this is the area of Sherwood out to Newburgh. Uh, there are a lot of faults that are in this particular area there. And then here is a map of the Missoula flood sediments. Uh, and as you can see here over in Vancouver, Clark County, look at the Missoula flood sediments. Very, very high values over here. High Missoula flood sediments here. Go back and look at, that's where all your red areas are right there uh, that you've got. And you can see some Missoula flood sediments over here. And, and then that's this area down in this area that you have here. This area out here is very, very high. It's more the faults and not the Missoula flood sediments that you have got. 
And so we so we eventually put together the map for Portland, high, medium, and low. So low areas are these areas like out in Hillsboro, Missoula flood sediments, they're fine grain uh, and not coarse grain. So they don't have the permeability in those soils. High and then moderate areas that you see here. Uh, and then we started venturing out for the rest of the state. And, and so we took all of the radon values. Look at this area that is out uh, on the other side. Uh, this is out in Pendleton. Very, very, very high out here. And this one, uh, this red area down here in South Central Oregon also uh, has very, very high areas. But then there are a lot of them are very low, mainly because we have a lot of assault in those areas. But then some moderate areas that are in areas here. We just tell everybody to test. And if you if it comes back that is less than two pico curious per liter, take that significant other in your life out for and celebrate. We have low radon; we don't have to worry about it. But if it's above four pico curious per liter in the test, get it mitigated or you test it again uh, and make sure that you are high and get it tested in those areas. And so uh, the 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 basic idea that we have on this is. Uh, uh, if you have values that are over four pico between four and ten, test again. If it still comes out high, then get it mitigated. And I showed you how expensive it is to mitigate, uh, if especially if it's over four pico curies per liter. If it's less than four pico curies per liter, you're happy, and and what you do is you get very excited and you go out and celebrate. Um, and then um, what we found also in a lot of our work with the uh, short-term tests that we have got uh, in the winter time, uh, the difference between short-term tests and the overall long-term tests that we have got in the winter time, they were pretty accurate. And so winter time short-term tests uh, can be very good compared to the long-term tests we have. Summertime, it, it's at twenty two percent off in the summertime. And one of my students, Solicity Ice Fire, is the one who found that. But in Portland, one in every four high houses is greater than four pico curies per liter. And that's a real problematic area that we have got. I think I have also one more from uh, across the, this is uh, Clark County, which is across the river. And this is the whole county. And uh, low risk is green. Well, there's nothing over there with low risk. Everything is moderate to high risk. And you can, and they, why? Because you have so many Missoula flood sediments that are out there. And so it's always fun to test your house and, and see, hopefully it's below four pico, per, four pico curies per liter, or at least um, a little bit uh, less than that, uh, less than two pico curies per liter. That's what you want. So that's a story on radon gas. Uh, that's a story of Oregon. And Washington has even higher values because you have more Missoula flood sediments that you have got. Uh, and, and we talked about how do you test your house and all the three different types of testings that you can do. And if you test again, if it's high, uh, then you can get it mitigated. The good news is we have uh, quite a few companies that can mitigate your house and they can come in and do it uh, in just maybe one or two days. And it's very, very cheap and it's not very expensive to do. And it's a good way to preserve your life and not die from like Bob, uh, the guy in Lake Oswego who died at the age of 48. He did not have to die. There are a lot of people that are dying out there because they don't realize that they have a radon problem in their house. So that is the story of radon gas that we have got. Um, and it's, uh, anybody have any questions that I could maybe answer? What if your house, uh, Scott, has uh, got a crawl space underneath? Oh, that is a great question about uh, having a crawl space. And um, the uh, uh, first of all, you don't test in a, a crawl space. You only test in the part where people are living. Because the, what will happen is the radon gas will come out and will come into the crawl space. But then a lot of uh, crawl, crawl spaces have ven ventilation uh, portals out. Uh, and so test only in the area where people are living. Don't test in the crawl space. But that is a way of uh, reducing the amount of radon that you have got because the radon will come out and then will move laterally in that. Uh, and, and so uh, don't test there, but then it, it may be high, but it, test in the house. Good question. Scott, I have a question. What, what if you have a daylight basement? Not a not a true basement. 
Well, the daylight basement will also has the potential uh, of having um, radon gas coming in because the part that is not daylight that it'll be coming, it'll be attached to the soil and will come in. And that house that I told you that had the highest value in the state at that time in 1992 had a daylight brace basement, but it was on an old landslide. So highly permeable soils. And then the generator, uh, the, the sediment that was down underneath, it was very, very high in radon. So uh, it was coming into the house. A great learning experience for me and I, uh, all of us on the radon uh, mitigation team. Thank you. We, we recently sold our house and it was tested for radon. I didn't ask for it. Uh, someone was there, set up their instruments, seemed like a couple of days or two or three days. Yes. And, and I guess the, the realtor that did this was just being a good realtor. I didn't ask for it. And there was no law requiring that test. Yeah. And, and so Oregon does not have a law to do that. If you live in Iowa, it, uh, it is a law because that's the state with the highest amount of radon coming into the house. houses. And it's all coming out of the glacial moraine deposits that you've got that have brought a lot of granite down from up in Canada. Uh, we recommend, I, I give talks to a lot of real estate agents every year. And, and I tell them that it is, when you uh, do a transaction and sell a house, I say, always ask the, the person that comes in and does a little checklist of things uh, to do a radon test. Now, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks to do it. Uh, and uh, But in the end, you're saving lives. If it's low, you celebrate. If it's high, you mitigate. And you don't want to buy a house that is high in radon. And so mm -hmm. you, you mitigate. And so uh, in the big picture of the house costs that are hundred thousand two hundred three hundred thousand dollars uh the amount of test uh, that you're the amount of money you're spending for testing is well worth it in the end either way you can if it, you celebrate if it's low if it's high you mitigate then celebrate and so uh, so i i try and get all real estate agents to do it and they say oh this house is in a low area and one of my low areas i say but there's still some houses that are high and it may be one of those houses and, but then what you do is when you sell it down the road, you can say, I did get it tested uh, and it was low then and most likely doesn't have it now. And, and, and also for the people who are buying it, it's just, it's a great feeling to know that they're buying a house that is low in radon. So good question and comment. Scott, I've got two questions. One okay. is, would you expect the radon to be much higher in a, a basement or a house that has a basement that's partially finished, so two of the walls are just soil. And then um, is there any benefit to testing in the basement and in the living area, just yes. having a comparison? Yeah, and, and, and so uh, especially doing short, uh, so testing in both the basement and the living area, I would do both of them because people are going to be living in both. They're going to be living in the living area, but then in the, the partially finished basement, you're going to be going in and out of it, uh, and so test. Do a short-term test you know, that you've got. You know, twelve to fifteen dollars that you've got. Uh, but then, uh, if you have exposed soil, there's nothing stopping it. Uh, and uh, but the good news is, a lot of our soils around here do not have the uranium and thorium level con concentrations. Uh, that would generate it. And so it may be low, especially the further away you get away from the Columbia River and the Missoula flood sediments. But then there are some places down in Willamette Valley that are all fine grain Missoula flood sediments. So uh, again, test, test both areas. And so uh, then if it comes back high in the basement, uh, and then what you want to do is kind of mitigate uh, and close off uh, and put plasticize or do something that that exposed soil that's in the basement. So good question, both of them. Is there a particular- I believe this video. All right, ahead. we have two questions. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna ask, is there a particular model uh, of, of test you recommend or are they available locally here in like Home Depot or? Yeah, man, so uh, most of your uh, uh, um, uh, places like Home Depot uh, uh, and um, all of the um, uh, stores that are, uh, what what's the word that I want? Um, what's Home Depot? The big bucks. Yeah, but I mean, 
Well, it doesn't home matter. improvement. Home improvement play, type of places. That's where you are going to buy most of these. Now, um, the uh, American Lung Association has an office that is in Tualatin, and they used to sell the short-term tests, uh, you know, for like five dollars, even though they they cost fifteen. Um, but uh, or you can go right online and just Google uh, purchasing home uh, uh, home tests. And you got the three different ones. You have the uh, short-term tests, long-term tests, uh, and you can do that. And then, uh, so yes, there are uh, ways of testing, and I would encourage you to do that. But going down to Home Depot or Lowe's, those are the uh, those are the places where you can get them right there. I believe the city of Lake Oswego at uh, City Hall provides. I know three test kits for lead. I thought they did it for uh, radon, radon as well. And, I might check with them. And, and and I would check into that because Lake Oswego has high values. That's where Bob, uh, who died, who I dedicated this to, lived. We did not expect Lake Oswego to be high. And the reason is, is because the Missoula floods came through there. And especially all of West Lake Oswego is all on Missoula flood sediments. Uh, and so if the if the city is providing most likely short term tests, wow, that is you made my day uh, to, uh, to do that. And so uh, always check to see if they can do that. Um, and the short term test is a week and you, you put it out in the summertime. Now, if your house is air conditioned all the time, you're keeping a lot of gas in there. So it's not a bad time to test in the summertime. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's it's something to think about. So good. You guys have asked some very good questions. Have we exhausted all our questions for this uh, today? Well, I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Burns, for making yourself available. I know you have a very busy schedule, and we appreciate your attend attendance. And uh, look forward to having you back for another talk. I know you, there are many subjects that, that we'd be interested in hearing from you on. Well, I, I thank you very much for the invitation. And maybe if I can save a life, you know, with the talk today, get some people to get out there and test your house. Uh, it's, it's very meaningful to me. And so I try and give as many of these talks as possible. A few years ago, I gave a talk up in North Portland uh, it was at, at the Kennedy School. It had maybe 150 people there, but there was one lady who was in there. I mean, that's her on Radon Ridge, but she also had a house at the beach down in Pacific City. And so she said, well, I'll just go down and test there. Her house was very high. And so uh, what they did is she had all of her neighbors down there test and all the houses were very, very high. We had no idea that that uh, it wasn't Pacific City. It was south of, of, uh, of, of Tillamook. But uh, I mean, as a result of one lady hearing the, t uh, the thing and testing her beach house, and then uh, saved a whole bunch of lives because uh, I think 150 houses in the town tested and most of them were high. And so if you get out and test and it's, lo uh, it's low, celebrate. But if it's high, yeah. mitigate and then celebrate. So thanks a lot. And thanks again for the uh, uh, the questions. You know, there, there were two things in the chat. I don't know if any of those were questions or not. No. Um, this is Carol Brown. Yep. And I am on the board of the American Lung Association in Oregon. Yep. And I just wanted to let everybody know that if you go to lung.org and you look in the um, clean air part, they you can order the tests online right there. And the short term is $18. I love it. Carol, you made my day. That's very good. <laughs> great it's thank probably. you thank you for the great talk the lung association really appreciates what you're doing you're well, right about it. lung I'm cancer being a major killer yep scott before before we lose you can we post your uh powerpoint on our website and also this uh uh video of the presentation yeah, of course i'm an educator okay. um, All right. and so in the the powerpoint will be in the video of it right yeah yeah, okay. Well, All right. well, sometimes we get, get a separate PowerPoint, but if you, if you just wanted this part of the but video, that's fine. You email me, you email me or whoever is in charge of that, and then I'll attach it. It's a small uh, a small file that I can okay. attach it, and then you'll, you'll have both of them. 
Thank you. So again, thank you very much. And all of you have a great day and enjoy this incredible weather that we have got here. Yeah. You bet. All right. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.